Hi, Mia. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Is her mic on? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. I was wondering if you could start us off by telling some of the, uh, some of the things that you like to do. I like to draw. To draw? Yeah. Love that. I love to draw, too. My daughter, I also have a daughter, and she loves to draw. It's one of her most favorite things to do. Do you watch TV shows? Yeah. Oh, what are your favorite TV shows? Mm. <laughs> do you like SpongeBob? No, my son likes t PJ Masks. I like that movie, too. Yeah. Do you like Paw Patrol? Yeah. Yeah, my son likes that, too. Um, on any of the shows that you watch, are there any robots? Yeah. Oh, are there some robots? That's so great. Have you ever seen a robot in real life? No. No? Do you know what? I actually have a robot at my house, and I wonder if you might have seen something like this. My robot is a vacuum robot. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, so he goes around, so I don't like to vacuum, so I got a robot who knows how to vacuum. He goes around my house and he picks up all the dog hair, because we have a dog. Do you have a dog? Or a cat? I do have a dog and a cat. Do you have a dog and a cat? And aren't they so furry? Yeah. Does their fur get on stuff? Sometimes on the floor is their fur from those pets. Yeah. yeah, and the vacuum has to go around and pick up all that fur. And did you know that those vacuums actually have to learn what is fur and what is a mess that they should not vacuum over? I didn't know that. Yeah, so they have these vacuums now. There are things that some pets do on the floor that you should not vacuum over. <laughs> and maybe we won't say what those things are, but they are messy. Um, so cats sometimes throw up on the floor, right? Ugh, it's so gross. Can you imagine if a vacuum went over that? Oh my gosh, it would be such a mess. It would go all over the floor. Believe me, it has happened in my house. And so they made these vacuums that can actually look at messes and decide if it's the kind of mess that they should vacuum over or should not vacuum over. My dog just throw up. <laughs> <laughs> my son does throw up. And you know what? We also should not vacuum over people throw up. That would be very bad. It would be such a mess. And so they, did you know inside of a robot there is no brain? There's only a computer. So inside your head you have a brain. And it's the sort of thing that would help you decide if you should vacuum over something or not. But robots do not have brains. And so inside there's just a computer and we have to figure out how to tell the computer what kind of messes should it vacuum over, should it not vacuum over. Some fur. Some fur is exactly what we should vacuum over. Exactly right. So we have to show it pictures of fur that are vacuumable, and then we show the pictures of not fur, things that should not be vacuumed over. And when it's, if it, uh, we try to get it to tell the difference between the two things. So inside of its little computer brain, it can learn that some things should be vacuumed and some things should not be vacuumed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can you think of something that you would like a robot to do for you? Clean up. Yes, right? Like your room. Wouldn't that be amazing if a robot could come clean up your room? Yeah. Yeah, and you have more than just vacuuming to do in your room. What other kinds of things do you need to do to clean up in your own room? Some toys. Right, the toys are on the ground. Where do the toys go? In your basket. In the baskets, exactly right. So we need new robots. We need robots that can tell which things are on the floor and need to go in baskets. Should it pick up your bed? And no. Put it in the basket? That's crazy. No. <laughs> so we need, we need to train new robots that can tell the new things that need to go into the basket. So toys go in the basket. Maybe do you have a place that, where books go? In your bookshelf. In the bookshelf, right. So the robot would need to learn where to put the books. The books go in the bookshelf. The toys go in the basket. And wouldn't that be amazing if we could have a robot that would do those things? I would love that, too. What kind of things do you think your parents would like a robot to do? Clean up. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm, I'm with you. There's a lot of things we need to do to clean up. Uh, so what kind of cleaning up tasks do your parents do? Do they put dishes away? Yeah. Yeah, holy moly. And putting dishes away, there's like all kinds of places that 
plates could go, but I bet there's only one place, is, one place that plates do go. And so it's an even harder problem when you get to the kitchen. The forks go with the forks, that's not where the plates go. So there's all kinds of fun problems that we need our robots to solve. Um, are there any fun things that you'd like a robot to do? Yeah. Yeah, like you like to draw. Wouldn't it be fun if a robot could draw with you? Yeah. Yeah, that would be so fun. Anything else? Um, I think, I think that, that I like to play with a robot. I love that. That would be so fun. Let's make robots that can play with us. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for coming to talk to me. Thank you. Okay, I think I have a 15-year-old. Hi. Awesome. I had water and then I lost it. So if somebody... Oh, I think it doesn't. If you could, I would love water if somebody would bring me water. If there was a robot that could bring us water. <laughs> okay, please. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Caden. Caden? Hi. Hi, Alana. Nice to meet you. Have a nice seat. Nice to meet you too. Good. Cool. So... Tell me what you know about machine learning. I know that it uh, interprets human knowledge. Good, into, awesome. Uh, I guess mimics into artificial intelligence. Cool, thank you so much. Yeah, totally. So um, can you think of ways that machine learning show up in your life right now? Do you know where they... I guess it... Um, hmm. YouTube is a place. Do you use YouTube? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So have you ever, I uh, recently got back into YouTube again. I've been watching some videos. And it does a really good job of suggesting the next video that you should watch. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah. It's, um, it has like a system, I guess. Yeah, exactly right. Have you ever had it serve you a new video that you, you did enjoy based on something else that you've watched? Mm -hmm. So I'm really into, I'm so nerdy. So this is not going to surprise anybody. I'm really into city planning right now. Uh, so I've been watching videos about city planning. And it keeps serving me new videos about different kinds of city planning that I hadn't, I hadn't thought about. Is there any, do you have any interest that, of things that you like to watch on YouTube? I like to watch some, I guess, I like to go into videos to learn some things about math or something, and sometimes cool. another video pops up in the recommended. Right, exactly right. Yeah, so that's exactly right. So machine learning is helping the system decide what kind of video you would like to watch next. Mm -hmm. And it's using some of the videos that you've already watched, and it uses things that, uh, features about those videos, so like the topic, uh, or things like that. Do you use any social media, like TikTok or I uh, don't use Twitter. TikTok, but sometimes I use uh, Twitter. Twitter? Yeah, yeah, good. So Twitter often will also show you, um, well, it, it has a lot of different posts that could show you, and it has to choose which ones to show you that you would might maybe most be interested in. Um, so it can use things like the words of the, of the tweet or the person who sent it, or also, can you think of other things that might tell it that you would like that particular tweet? You would be interested yeah, in Yeah, um, maybe you repost it or... Right, yeah, so people that you like to uh, have themselves retweeted it or things like that, right, mm -hmm. or hashtags. Yeah, cool. Um, I was thinking about uh, TikTok. TikTok is extremely good at deciding what videos you would like to watch next, to the point where like, I can end up with an entire hour on TikTok and have like, not even noticed that it's happened. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it does a great job. Um, but there are also cases where TikTok, um, they have these filters. Have you ever seen the filters? So they can put like, a, they put like makeup on you or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're funny, yeah. right? Yeah. I've seen ones where they can put a beard on you. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, they, so to, in order to do that, they have to be able to look at the picture and tell where your face is, right? And where the beard should go. Um, and those filters don't work equally well on everybody. Um, so some people, uh, if they have different colored skin or they have a, a different face shape than other people, um, the filters don't work as well. So for example, so th what I'm trying to get at is that there are, there are ways in which these machine learning algorithms can fall down and fail. Um, do you have any uh, questions about uh, that or? I'm, I think I'm okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm not sure what to ask. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you would like ma machine learning to do for you? Is there anything that? in your day-to-day -day life that is hard and you would you think a robot should do it instead, or a computer? Hmm. 
maybe. <laughs> um, do you drive yet? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. And do you want to learn to drive? Yeah. <laughs> do you? Okay. <laughs> I actually never wanted to learn to drive, so I'm very on board with computers driving cars, and I don't have to. So not having to spend that time, but. Um, what would you think? Do you think a computer, having a computer drive a car for you would be a good thing? That would be, I think that would be pretty uh, cool. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that, but it'd be pretty scary. It would be scary. Cool. Yeah. So what, what kind of things are scary about having a car drive for you? Maybe the AI doesn't register something right and you, I guess, get into an accident. Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly what I was, the same sort of thing as the filter's not working. So there are places where AI can fail. And sometimes they can fail in ways that are differentially bad for for groups of people. So like, what if it was really bad at detecting short people? That would be terrible <laughs> for short people. <laughs> Especially, you know, most people start out pretty short, so that turns out poorly for them. <laughs> um, yeah, so we just, I think it's important to think about how machine learning um, interacts with our daily life and how uh, it might not uh, benefit everybody in the same way. Do you have any other thoughts or questions about AI, machine learning? I haven't thought about that. <laughs> um, Do you wish I could do your homework for you? Uh, no. No? Cool. <laughs> That's very up, upright of you. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I'd be the laziest person in the world if I let an AI do that for me. Cool. So that's a good thing to think about, too, that like letting AI do, do our jobs for us is not always in our best interest. Sometimes we would, it's probably better if we keep doing it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. AI can be pretty scary sometimes. I agree. <laughs> AI can be pretty scary sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really yeah. great to talk to you. Thank you. Hi. What's your name? Roman. Roman. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come nice sit down. You. So I've heard you're 25 or close to it. Close to it. <laughs> I was wondering, could you tell us what you know about machine learning? I know it's used in a lot of technologies today. Uh -huh. Like you mentioned social media, a lot of the things on the internet. Uh, the way they capture, the way they decide what to show us. Uh -huh. It's using, it uses machine learning and a bit of my work has to do with advertising. Oh, so machine learning has been very useful with advertising. Yes, machine learning and advertising have really made good friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, so... Um, Google surging, serving ads. Um, that's interesting to think about. There's there's two sides to that. There's the person who uh, sees the ad, but then I, it sounds like you're the person who makes the ad, and you decide um, the person you're trying to target it towards. Um, so, have you gone through that process of actually using Google Ads or some sort of like online advertising service? Yes, I yeah. have. Yeah, good. So, actually, I haven't. So, tell me about what's that like. It's really interesting because you're able to target people in really unique ways. Uh -huh. And it's fascinating how there's this database, global database, where I'm able to have access to different characteristics of people, interests, demographics, and be able to tailor information towards those people and get in front of their eyes. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing is one of the ways, one of the things it is. Uh, scary is another. Um, but do you, does it ever, did it ever occur to you that those people might not have actually supplied those characteristics and they might have been generated by machine learning? Definitely. Yeah, so that's also interesting that I might not have told the system that I'm interested in city planning, for example, but it has inferred it from the, from the things that I watch. And it might also infer that if I'm interested in city planning, I might also be interested in, I don't know, bikes, I don't know, something else, trains. Um, so it, do you ever see those sorts of things too, that you know, you've, you're interested in, in getting at a particular audience and they might have uh, interests that are related to other things? It's, yes, it can be very tricky, uh -huh. you know, doing advertising at times, what you design it for comes off completely different from, from what you expected. Oh, cool. I want to hear about that. Can you tell me more? Well, let's say you want to advertise, you're advertising land uh -huh. and you want to get these ads in front of people who want to build a home in the rural Alberta. Uh -huh. And as an advertiser, ideally, you want to get that ad in front of the person that's ready to make that decision. Right. But then you will get in front of a person that is looking at land for a completely different reason. Mm. It has nothing to do with purchasing it oh. ever. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just 
something came up in a conversation, and people are just curious to look up the, the, that term on Google. Uh -huh. And it's a complete misalignment between, between what I want to accomplish as an advertiser right. and what the person viewing the ad wants to accomplish. Oh, that's interesting, right. Yeah, so there's, and there's often misalignments, right, between what a system is trying to do and what uh, the users are trying to do. So you're trying to get in front of somebody who's at a particular point in their life and they're trying to make a particular decision. Um, and it could be true that the, the algorithm is more interested in, in getting your money in whatever way possible. Exactly. Yeah. Good, cool. Um, do you guys do you do um, any advertising on social media? Yes. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly, yeah. Um, what kind of platforms? Facebook, ah. Instagram, and LinkedIn. Those are the main social media platforms. Cool. And so, what do you what do you uh, do you do anything differently on those different platforms? Yes, <laughs> I would say it has to do with age for oh, the most part. Oh, okay, interesting. So. You are deciding uh, what you'll target at particular audiences because of age uh, and the age of the people that use those platforms. Yes, because the way I look at it, a platform like Instagram, uh -huh. it's kind of like a nightclub. Ooh. People, 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 people want, want to show off. They want to oh. in, get intrigued. Oh, interesting. Versus LinkedIn, it's more sophisticated and people prefer modesty. Oh, interesting. And humility. Ooh, that's not what I think of when I think of LinkedIn. <laughs> but you know better than me, that's for sure. It's a different kind of modesty. Yes, yes right, exactly. yeah. Yes. <laughs> modesty while also selling yourself. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's great. So it's interesting to think about how also the algorithm itself would be trying to find subpopulations within the nightclub, so to speak, uh, to find to serve your ads to. So it knows that if um, this particular person uh, Man, you should not try to buy a car using the internet because you will get car ads for like months after. So, you know, a particular person in a particular f time of their life might click on a car ad and then forever and ever you get car ads, uh, even if you're not actually going to buy a car. Um, so it's interesting to think about how they're using what you have clicked on, both ads and not ads, to infer your interests as well as um, try to find the next things that you'll click on. So do you have any, any more questions about machine learning or how they might interact with social media? I'm curious about how much machine learning takes feedback from people using or being, being, using the, being impacted by machine learning. For example, the individuals showing, being shown these different ads. How much is machine learning taking into consideration what people think about what they're seeing? That's interesting. Um, so I think it has to infer what they're thinking about what they're seeing. So um, closing the app, I think, is probably something that they take pretty strong uh, evidence from, right? Um, what are some other ways that you could tell what somebody's thinking when they're looking at an ad? Clicks. Clicks, Clicks. yeah, right, exact. Clicks, uh, maybe how long you watch it for. Uh, if you push the skip ad button on YouTube <laughs> and things like that to tell not only um, if you're interested in the product, but also what kinds of ads would you watch for longer and what kinds of ads might you click on even if you're not going to buy anything, right? And so sort of learning a model that can tell you and predict things about what a person's behavior will be like I think is a big part of machine learning. It's also a big part of your job, right? Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really cool to talk to you. Thank you. Okay.